by itself by natural heat transfer, overheating would cause the expansion of engine parts and insufficient lubrication would also result. It is necessary to have a cooling system to maintain the engine at its optimum temperature. There are two basic types of cooling systems, air-cooled systems and water-cooled systems. Air-cooled systems can be divided into natural air-cooled systems and forced air-cooled systems. In natural air cooling systems, fins cast into the cylinder head and around the cylinder itself aid in transferring the heat of the engine to the air of the wind. The fins act to increase the surface area of the cylinder and cylinder head, allowing more air to come into contact with the heated areas. The shape and layout of the fins differ according to the characteristics of the engine. Efforts are made to allocate them uniformly so as not to cause the engine to be overcooled. In the forced air cooling system, a fan is driven by the crankshaft to blow cooling air onto the cylinder and cylinder head. Ducts and covers are attached to direct the flow of forced air to the areas of the engine that need cooling. Because the fan is driven by the revolutions of the engine, the engine can be cooled regardless of the speed of the motorcycle. In the cases of many scooters, a forced air cooling system is used because the wind does not come into contact with the engine in many designs. A water cooling system passes liquid coolant through passages around the cylinder and combustion chamber. The heat caused during the combustion is transferred to the coolant and the engine is cooled. This diagram shows how the conventional water cooling system works. As the engine turns, the water pump pumps the coolant through the water jacket or passages around the cylinder and cylinder head. The coolant in the water jacket absorbs the heat of the engine. The heated coolant then passes through the radiator where its heat is transferred to the air that passes through the radiator. The coolant returns to the pump and is pumped through the system again. The conventional water cooling system uses a centrifugal pump such as this. Its impeller is powered by the revolutions of the engine pushing coolant towards the circumference of the pump. The water jacket is designed so as to envelope the combustion chamber and the cylinder. The thermostat senses the temperature of the coolant in the water jacket to make sure that the engine runs at the optimum temperature. The expansion and contraction of the wax inside the thermostat opens and closes a valve which controls the flow of coolant. When the temperature of the coolant is low, the wax in the pellet of the thermostat contracts, closing the valve. When the temperature of the coolant rises, the wax expands accordingly, opening the valve, increasing the amount of coolant sent to the radiator to be cooled. If the temperature of the coolant is lowered due to the temperature of the exterior, the wax will contract, closing the valve. The thermostat is responsible for opening and closing the valve that controls the flow of engine coolant according to its temperature, in order to maintain the engine at the optimum temperature at all times. The radiator is located in a position that comes in contact with wind as the motorcycle moves forward. Coolant enters the radiator from the upper tank and flows through tubes among the fins, increasing the heat transfer surface area. The coolant then flows down to the lower tank after having been cooled. Some models depend not only upon the wind to cool the radiator, but are also equipped with a cooling fan in the back of the radiator. Conventional water cooling systems are also equipped with a reservoir tank which is sealed and pressurized. This is to aid in adjusting the pressure of the coolant within the system. 
The pressure in the reservoir tank is adjusted with the pressure and negative pressure valves in the radiator cap. When the coolant temperature rises, the coolant itself expands and when a pressure of 0.9 kilograms per cubic centimeter above atmospheric pressure is created, the spring is pressed up and the pressure valve is opened. The expanded coolant flows into the reservoir tank. When the temperature of the coolant lowers, the coolant contracts. The pressure within the radiator cap becomes less than atmospheric pressure. The negative pressure valve opens and the coolant in the reservoir tank flows back into the radiator. In this way, the sealed pressurized water cooling system with reservoir tank controls the flow of coolant efficiently and has the advantage of not requiring coolant refills for extended periods of time, making for safe, dependable use.